Hey guys, did you miss me? I do hope you had a good two weeks off for your Easter holes and I hope you're trying hard to keep up with your work on Google Classroom at the moment. It's very hard, but we're in it together. Um, I think at the moment what I've realised in the past week is that it's very easy to have up and down days. I'm sure everyone's feeling the same about it. I think it's made us all realise how important it is to keep our brains healthy and our mental health and sometimes that just means doing things that you enjoy. If things are stressing you out too much we really need to be putting that aside and just not even going there at this moment in time. So with that in mind some people do find art as a very good channel for your emotions or just to have yourself a little bit of you time. So it may not be something that you have to do right now, but it may be something you want to do. And today, I'm going to be looking at Juan Miro, how, if that's how you say it, I don't know. Um, but all of his work is really fun. Some of the latest stuff that he was doing are kind of constellations of shapes. Uh, they say they had his little wild period, and you can kind of see that in the things that he creates. I'm going to show you a little picture now. So the word that I've just shown you is actually made of like pastels on paper. So if you wanted to use that today, you can do. If you wanted to use colour paper as your background, you can do. But um, I'm just going to be using a pencil, coloured pencils, and obviously my trusty rubber. Um, and then I've got two pieces of paper, one kind of scrap piece and one normal piece of A4 that my final design is going to go on to. His work that we're looking at is weirdly based around women. So I don't know if he had a bit of a dodgy relationship at some point, but uh, these women are kind of transformed into monsters. Um, it did remind me of a little workshop that we did at MK Gallery a while ago. So I'm going to kind of show you what we did. It's really quite fun, really quite relaxed. So I just want you guys to have fun with it and um, show me what you've got because I'm really enjoying seeing all your artwork. The first thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to take my scrap paper, in my case it's a pad, and my pencil and I'm just going to take objects or things that I see around the room and I would like you to take the outline of this shape. I would like you to have at least five shapes. Now for me I am going to start off by drawing this bottle of white spirit. As you can see I've been painting doors in my house so um, I'm just going to make it really simple and draw the outline of it. I would like you guys to be thinking of the proportion of things so how big the bottle cap is in relation to the actual bottle and just try and get it as accurate as you can. As you can see by Juan Miro's work it's all a bit crazy. No details just an outline. This isn't our final piece either, so you guys can go as crazy as you want. Next one I'm going to do my tortoise candle. Right, I've got my outline of my tortoise here. I also have on this, this shape. So I'm gonna use that as well. You may have um, things on the wall, you may have different uh, kind of light fittings or something. Just really simplify shapes down. I very sneakily drew around this and with this one up here it's a really simplified version of the hair that I found on these little men in this pot. Now I have my five shapes. Very simple. Take little bits out of what you see or drawing around the whole shape. It is totally up to you. Now next part is, is we're going to start putting these shapes together. So the composition of these shapes is totally up to you. Like he said, he's calling them constellations sometimes. Think of it as that. Think of it that you're moving all these little shapes around to make something, to make a nice constellation. I want you to be playing around with the scale of things. So on here you can clearly see that my bottle is the biggest one and this tortoise shape. Now I might do this really small and this, maybe this is the biggest one. I don't know. I want you to do a couple of designs. Maybe you do one and it's amazing. You don't need to do any more. But on your scrap paper, let's try and fit these together in different ways so you're experimenting with the scale of the shapes and the arrangement of the shapes to make your oh, perfect monster. These look so cute. Right, this is my first one. As you can see, he's got the kind of like dangly body and then I'll put the little tortoise down here as a foot. Not really sure about that. Second one, and I'm using some of these objects maybe to do some facial features. And on the next one, 
I actually did use a big one twice, so this shape I kind of used it twice down here. And I'm pretty sure this is now my favourite one. So I think I'm ready to rock. I'm going to use this one and I'm going to transfer it onto my piece of paper. Now, like I always say, I don't want to see a diddy thing in the middle of here. I want to see it cover the whole page. My lines are not feathered. I've done a nice bold line all the way around and I'm ready to start colouring this now. I'm going to show you the pictures once more so you can look at the transition of colour. See what colours you want to use as well. So I'm going for primary colours plus green and black because I think that's been a bit of a theme on some of his drawings. On each shape that we've got, He's got at least two colours in there, and you can see that there's quite a clear transition from one colour to another. I would personally suggest having a little think about what you want your main colour in the background to be, and also where your light source is coming from. So if I say my light is coming from over here, from this side, naturally speaking, we're going to have the kind of lighter colours on this side of the page, or the shapes and the darker colours on the black on this side of the shapes. So it will kind of go from like maybe a yellow into a red. Tip of today is that we're going to be layering our pencils to try and get that nice fade. But really layer it so you don't have garish lines going across the top. Then I'm going to start going a bit lighter as I kind of fade out into the white. This is very cartoon like, it's not realistic so the direction of our drawing doesn't matter too much and then from down here this side I'm going to start with my red. So as I'm coming up to the yellow bit I'm going to overlap onto the yellow and press lighter and lighter with my red pencil so I'm going to try and get a nice fade between the two. Left a bit down here because I might put a bit of black in. Like I said it's two colours minimum per shape but you could go pretty wild if you wanted to. Yeah so it's just really about practising getting it fairly even and your transitions between the colours. This is why this one can be quite good for your, for your mental health. You can sit down and actually just take time and just scribble. So just layering, layering, like really lightly layering, layering, layering until you get something that you're happy with. So, as you can see, I'm just going to repeat this with all the shapes. They don't have to be the same colours. You may want to have a colour theme like the black kind of running through it all. Um, have one more look at the pictures on the screen. Let's come say hi. I decided I wanted a blue background, so I've only put a little tiny bits of blue in it and made sure that they're not the edge. The outline of the shape comes from the transition of the two colours, so you don't actually need to outline it all unless you really want to. Um, and I'm going to just colour his mouth in black. I'm going to leave a white line around the outside because I saw one of his pictures where he did that and I thought it was quite cool. You could add teeth to yours, you could do whatever you like. And then once we've done the background, you can actually see in a lot of his work that he puts kind of shapes of stars or crosses or kind of symbols. I might do a kind of moon and a star, so I might leave them white, colour in the rest blue. With the background, I'm actually just going to outline the whole shape with a bit of shading first. So I've given myself a bit of a barrier, so that's easier to colour in. Just a little tip. All right, so I'm done. I have pretty much done the whole background and I've added some of these like kind of star symbols in black, like I was saying about. He's so cute, right? <laughs> so today it's all about just layering your pencils. You don't have to go in like really hard. Um, nice straight outlines, play around the scale of the objects that you've chosen. And hopefully you're gonna come out with a piece with a really cute little monster on, just like mine. Well, it's nice to see you all again. Hopefully I'll see some of your pieces soon. Stay safe. Stay mentally good. And um, hit me up if you need any help with any of your homework and stuff. I'll speak to you soon. Bye.